With two games remaining, what else do we need to learn about the New York Giants that we don't already know from this disastrous 2023 season? We discuss that and more with special guest coach Gene Clemens coming up next on the Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of the Locked on Giants podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked on Giants podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Train at P Train. Happy to have you with us. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Or if you watch on YouTube, your first watch of the day, shout out to my Blue Crew community members, my everydayers, my newcomers, and everybody in between. You are appreciated and loved, and happy holidays to everybody. And on today's show, pleased to welcome in somebody we have seen before, but we haven't seen him in a long time, and that's my fault, but he's always welcome on the program. Coach Gene Clemens, who is an NFL analyst. He does work for Pro Football Game Plan. He, he does work for Giants Country. He's done work for The Athletic. He is a real football coach, hence why we call him Coach Gene. We give the man his due. And uh, Coach Gene, happy holidays to you. Thank you so much for joining me on the program today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Happy holiday to everybody out there. It was a rough one um, on on Christmas. Um, But as always, there's there's positives and negatives to take from a game. And so um, I think a, a day after a game, you should always reflect, but you should always look forward. So I look forward to doing both. Absolutely. And of course, you know, with the loss yesterday to the Philadelphia Eagles, the Giants already slim playoff hopes gone. They're done. Two games left. You know, people look at it and they say, okay, what is there to play for? You know, the Giants media today on Tuesday, um, as we record this, we were on a video call with Coach Dable and just it was at a point where what do you ask him? There's not a whole lot to talk about. But Gene, let's talk about these next two games and what we could potentially get out of them. You know, what, what's a reason to tune in, do you think for these next two games, even though there's technically nothing to play for? I I think you have to ask yourself as a fan, um, why do I follow a team, right? Do I only follow the team when the team's good or do I follow them through everything? And, And I think at this point, any fan of a team, that is out of the play, out of playoff contention. They're looking for those silver linings. They're looking for who are those players that we can say, okay, this person is going to be a foundational piece for next year, or or someone that we can build with and and help going forward into the next year. I think that's where you have to be at because if it's just woe is me or oh my gosh our team is bad or oh we've lost a lot of games, it just makes for a miserable year. And so you always have to be looking towards the positives. Like, what can we take from this? What positives can we take? Um, I know for for one, I think that the the performance outside of the drop pass, you know, the the performance of Wondell Robinson down these last few games has shown that he can be a part of a, a, a receiving core and do a lot of different dynamic things for this team. And so I think that's where, fans need to focus their attention at not on what we don't have, but really more on what we do have, because what we don't have, no one knows what that's going to look like. All right. Then sticking with that thought, Gene, what does this team have? You mentioned Wandale Robinson, who are a few, a few other thing uh, players or other things that you saw this season that, that you, you feel the giants can carry over into next year and build on. Well, one thing that I think, and I still don't believe that Giants fans have apologized enough for it, um, and I'm going to continue to bang the table until I see more people in this space, um, whether that's media or content creation, do so is a lot of people need to walk back their Darius Slayton takes. There's a lot of people who owe Darius Slayton the utmost apologies. Um, Not only has he performed well from last season, they're, they're, they're fantastic year, but he's performed really well this year 
amongst having to deal with three different quarterbacks thrown in at different times, different types of, of game plans, a, a, a slight shift in his role and what he does that's different. I think that he's proved that he is a legitimate wide receiver number two um, in this league. And if he had a, a, a number one receiver and a consistency at the quarterback position, I think that he would thrive in the, in the receiving core would thrive um, as well. I think that that's definitely a, a, a positive to take away. I think that we've seen once again that Saquon Barkley is him. Um, throughout this year, even through injuries and and offensive line woes, like people talk about the quarterbacks being sat, but they don't talk about the fact that a lot of holes aren't really being open um, the way that some holes are being open for other running backs around the league. I think that what Saquon has been able to do in that shelf that people always say that running backs fall off um, after 25 or 26 years old, I don't, I don't think you see any signs of Saquon Barkley slowing down or being what he is right now, which is a dynamic um, football player and somebody that this team should be looking to invest in going forward in the future. Um, I actually think that that through what we've seen out of the offensive line, we've probably seen some people emerge who probably should be really quality backup um, offensive linemen. And so when you plug in some starters into a couple places like the, the, the left guard position and, and, and most likely the right tackle position, I think you're going to be left with much better depth on the back end than you've had this year because people have been forced into starting roles that we never really thought would be starting for this Giants team. Um, so offensively, I think you see those things. I think you see um, emerging depth at defensive back, um, emerging depth at defensive back. We say, hey, what's going to happen when we potentially say goodbye to Jackson after um, this season's over with? I think that you see that the fall off from Jackson to whomever um, would come in for him to replace him isn't probably going to be that much. I think we have safety um, flexibility in the types of safeties that the Giants have. So so that's great. I think that we've seen the linebacking core be more solidified with Okereke and his, his Pro Bowl caliber play this year. Um, I think that we've seen that um, – um, oh, gosh, he just his name just popped out of my head. Um, our, our, the other the other linebacker, Micah gonna, McFadden. Yes, McFadden. My apologies, Micah McFadden. I think McFadden has done a, a great job. I think the next key for him is to get stronger, um, and, and get be able to kind of bring guys down because he's always going to be an undersized guy. But like Ivan Pace in in Minnesota, um, size is not a skill, and he's shown the ability to get to the football on a regular basis. I think that's something that you can you can um build around. The, the question marks that we have, which is, you know, with with um, edge rushing and pass rushing, those things are things we can't think of. But we know what we have over on that other side. And that is a guy in um, Kayvon Thibodeau who can be a, a, a top level pass rusher in this league. Um, I think that what he's shown the second half of last year and this entire year when given the opportunity um, is a guy who can get consistent pressure. And even if he doesn't get to the quarterback, because of the pressure that he provides, somebody else is going to get to the quarterback. And I think we saw that again against the Eagles. He didn't um, record a sack, but but I believe Jahar Ward um, got a sack that he would not have been able to get if if, if Thibodeau hadn't um, been 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 sending pressure and, and making him step, making that quarterback um, Jalen Hurts step up into the pocket. So I think when we look at all of those things, oh, and then obviously Dexter Lawrence is Dexter Lawrence. You know, <laughs> enough said about that. He is who he is. And, and so now you there's a lot of building blocks at every level that you can that you can say, hey, if if Houston can be a playoff team in a year with just a couple of changes and Indiana Indianapolis or in um the Colts can be a, a contender with just a couple of changes, if the 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 Jaguars can be a contender with just a few changes. Why can't the why can't the Giants? So like I think that there's a lot of things to to be excited about going into 2024. That's not like pie in the sky things. Like we wish, we hope. We know we have a legitimate left tackle. We know we have a legitimate nose 
Um, we know we have a legitimate edge rush. We know we have a guy who can be a cornerback number one. We know we have safety depth. We know we have a, a Mike linebacker who's one of the best in the game. We know we have receiving options and weapons. Um, and, and, and we know we have emerging depth on the offensive line. And we have that guy at running back named Saquon Barkley. So um, all of those positives, I can't just sit here and only focus on the negative. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly things that you can look at that are are positive. But let me ask you this, Gene, <clears throat> excuse me, coaching. That's drawn a lot of criticism this year. You know, um, the question of, is Wink Martindale going to be back? Should Thomas McGahee be back? Should Bobby Johnson be back? Should Mike Kafka be back? What coaching changes should Brian Dable consider making? Given all the, the this foundation that they have, is there a danger of them making too many changes? And if 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 uh, you agree that you know changes are going to be made, which it looks like there will be, where do the changes really need to be made to to take this team and this coaching staff to the next level? Well, I, I think that every year you're going to make changes, but when you have a year like this, somebody is going to fall on the sword, right? Someone's going to have to take the responsibility for it. We know that in many cases it can't be the players. Um, depending upon you can't get rid of 35, 40 um players off of a roster. You, your cap would be in, in shambles, and the Giants are already still trying to get themselves out of a, a, a cap that was in shambles. And so um I, I think you will see some coaching changes. I, I think that there are some that might be warranted um just based off of the production that we've seen. Um, I think that. You know, and I never really want to call for people's jobs, but I think that you would have to reevaluate your offensive line coach situation um, and, and what's going on there. Um, how what's that approach, how that how that approach is being taken from the offensive line and themselves. Um, there may just be time for a new voice. Um, it, it might not be anything more than that, but something is a disconnect. Something is a miss. When it comes to that, and and I think it, I think also when you think about that, the coordination of the run game, as as a as an entire whole, um, and and what that has looked like, and maybe some responsibilities being shifted in how we scheme things and how we block things up. I can't tell you how many times, and we we were on we were on the live chat, um, the live blog on 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 Giants Country you know, shameless plug, make sure you come and um, check out, check us out, you know, next, next Sunday when we're out there. But um, I can't imagine how many times we would run away from our best offensive linemen in critical rushing like downs, like third and one and fourth and one. And we're running over the right side, which is filled with a couple backups when we've got our all pro left tackle collapsing lines on the left side. I just don't understand that. So that's a place that I think has been heavily scrutinized along the offensive line. And I think that's a place that that should be looked at and say, hey, is it time for us to, to, to do something different? But beyond just the offensive line, the run game and pass protection um, schemes that are in place that seem to always have some elite level pass rusher just running wide open. Nick Bosa, an unabated to the quarterback sack earlier in the year. Um, yesterday, Hassan Reddick, several um, unabated, or excuse me, Monday on Christmas, several unabated to the quarterback rushes. Um, I just don't quite understand how that happens um, schematically. I would be asking questions. So I think that's a, a place that we should really, that, that, that the Giants should really look into. Is there a change needed? One place that I feel like he's gotten a bad rep, and and I don't know why, is um, special team quarter, coordinator Thomas McGahey. I don't quite understand what people want him to do about the things that are ailing the Giants. When you look at the special teams, he doesn't kick, he doesn't he doesn't fill the ball, and he doesn't tackle. So. If the kicker, who he has put in positions to be successful, he implemented the rugby kick because that was something that Gillen did really well. Um, if he's done things to make the kicker comfortable 
when the kicker, when the punter doesn't perform and, and, and shanks a punt or kicks a punt short or doesn't put in the air underneath a punt, like how is that on the special teams coordinator? When you lose four and five kickers in a season, how is that on the special teams coordinator? When you put back guys who have been sure-handed their entire um, careers when it comes to fielding the ball and they and they muff punts, like how is that on the, the, the special teams coordinator? And so I think a lot of the things that we try to put on coaches sometimes, we really need to, to, to point that blame where it should be, which is the players, and say, hey, you have a job to do. If you're not doing that job, then maybe the change should be there and not necessarily um, in, in, in the coach. So I think that that's one of the places where I think a lot of people say, oh, we got to get rid of him. And I'm like, what What do you think a new special teams coordinator is going to come in and do? This has been, since I've been covering the Giants, has been three different staffs. It's been three different staffs, maybe four different special teams coordinators in that time. The special teams has looked pretty similar the entire time. So so is that the special teams coordinator or is, or is that the players buying into what you need to do in order to have a, a or, or just focusing in on their job to do it to the best of their ability? Because we've seen some things that have been great. Carter Coffin's having a fantastic season as a special teamer. Um, Darnay Holmes, a guy who I still don't believe should have lost his nickelback job. Is, is has been doing really well as a special teamer this year um, because he's a consummate professional and he's smart. You know, you can't, you, you have to find those guys. Those are the type of guys that you want on special teams. Um, guys who are selfless, guys who, who do their job regardless. The special teams coordinator doesn't pick the people. He just works with what you gave him. So like, if, if that's the case, then maybe we should be putting a little bit more heat on, on the general manager to make sure that he's getting those pieces in place so that these coaches can do their job correctly. And I think that a lot of people have been letting Joe Shane skate on some of these decisions that he's made as the, as the general manager. Fair and interesting perspective. Now, a big decision coming up, which we're going to talk about after the break, is quarterback, the then and the future, the now and the future. So we'll talk about that right after this quick break. Hey, Giant fans, if you want to secure tickets to your favorite concerts, shows, and sporting events without the stress, you need to check out Game Time, the fast and easy way to buy tickets right up until the day of the event. With amazing deals on last-minute tickets and their best prices guaranteed, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you're going to have. With Game Time, you not only get the lowest prices guaranteed, you also get clear images of seat views and event cancellation protection. And if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So go ahead and snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Lockdown NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. Terms apply. Again, that code is Lockdown NFL for $20 off your first purchase at Game Time. All right, everybody, welcome back to Locked On Giants. You got me, Patricia Trainer, P Train, your host, and I'm joined by Coach Gene Clemens of Giants Country, and we're talking Giants. What else? And uh, Coach, always great to, to chop things up with Coach because he has different perspectives. I, I love getting into the, the mind of a coach. And, yes, folks, he is a real football coach. He does coach a team. And I just love getting that different perspective, and I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am today. Coach, I want to talk about the quarterback position. You know, we we purposely didn't talk about it last segment because it kind of de- it it deserves its own segment as far as I'm concerned. Right now, as we record this, the Giants have to make a decision for these last two games, DeVito or Tyrod Taylor. And I know you did a piece for Giants Country on which guy you think makes the most sense, but I want to have you talk about who makes the most sense and why? Because I thought your piece on Giants Country raised an interesting perspective that I don't think a lot of people even thought of. Well, yeah, I think I think a lot of times when we think about um, who to play at quarterback when a season is essentially, you know, there's no chance for a postseason. We we often think about the development of the quarterback, but we don't think about the development of anyone else. And so, like 
there are other people on this team who need these last two games. Um, I, I know that we that we went out and got Darren Waller in 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 a trade, but there's no there's no guarantee that Darren Waller's back with this team next year. And so it becomes, hey, what value does Darren Waller add going into 2024? Can he be the guy that we thought he could be this year, but it didn't materialize because of injury and then um, the fact that he just wasn't getting targeted at the level that you would think that he would get targeted at in some of these games where he was available? Um, you look at a guy like you look at a guy like um, Jalen Hyatt. Um, the the rookie who has had splashes and his 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 game versus the, the New England Patriots, the offense didn't really score much points, but he had a great game. His his only game over a hundred yards. Well, he's been MIA. Other than that, like in the in the time where DeVito has been the court been the quarterback for the Giants, he has, I believe, five catches for 39 yards. Outside of that one game. At New Eng- or against New England where he had a breakout game. But if you look at his production with Tyrod, there's a lot more explosiveness with it. And, and that's really simple. It's really simple why. Tyrod Taylor, if you ask anybody that knows anything about football, they will tell you that Tyrod Taylor throws one of the best, most beautiful, most accurate deep balls in the game. He just has a knack for knowing when to release it. He has a knack for knowing where to place it. And wide receivers usually catch it because it's usually an easily receptable ball. And so that is what he has made his kind of – it's been his in everywhere that he's been. It's why people continue to give him give him opportunities. Um, his poise, his ability to be able to um, exist in chaos and not get happy feet and just look to run all the time, that's something that – um, allows wide receivers to work that intermediate to deep um, area. And so I think that when you think about what he brings to the table as a quarterback, it gives those other guys the opportunity to figure out or to have the last two games almost as like a tryout. Hey, I want to be a part of this 2024 team. This is what I bring to the table when you have a quarterback back there that can get me the ball and that can be dynamic with the um, throwing the ball, not just – um, making splash plays with his feet or getting rid of the ball quickly. And so I think a guy like Jalen Hyatt would, would, would benefit. I think that um, even, even, you know, even, even someone like um, um, Wandale showing that he can be more than just a short yards, um, quick pass screen game guy. He can be more of an intermediate to deep threat with a guy like Tyrod in. You saw them take a few a few more shots with him in the game once Tyrod was in the game. It's not just the 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 that they're calling the game differently cuz I don't believe the game is being called differently. I just believe that the two quarterbacks are executing the game plan differently. And so where you look at a guy like Tyrod who's going top to top down, uh, a guy like DeVito is going one read and I'm gone, <laughs> you know, one thing and I'm gone, or if it doesn't look right, I'm gone. And, and maybe that's a part of, of being a rookie, but he's a 25 year old rookie. And so it's not like he's a, you know, every, people are ready to get rid of Evan Neal and he's, he's 22 years old, 23 years old. So it's like a 25 year old rookie who's been playing on um, football as long as DeVito has should have the discernment to be able to do that type of thing right now. That's stuff that I'm asking my high school quarterbacks to do. And so um, giving those other players the opportunity to have more success might be a reason why a coaching staff decides that they want to go Tyrod as opposed to Tommy. Now, obviously, Tyrod's going to be an, an unrestricted free agent after this year. There is some thought that he may not be in the future plans. Tommy is under control under contract for next year. Daniel is under contract for next year, but he of course has got to come back from that ACL tear. Where do you see this Giants quarterback position going? I mean, right now the Giants have the fifth overall pick in the draft. We'll see where they end up. So some people are saying, oh, they got to get a quarterback. They've got to draft their next franchise quarterback. Some people are saying, oh, they, you know, just bring in a veteran to, to, 
hold the fort down until Daniel's ready and then get Daniel better, you know, players around him. But Daniel has had what five years now. And, you know, he had that one good year and kind of went backwards this year. So what, what, how do you sort out this quarterback situation? If you are Joe Shane, what do you, what do you believe this team should be? I think that is what is going to determine how you move with quarterback. If you believe that this team is a quarterback away, then move heaven and earth and go and get the quarterback that you think is better than the guys that you have on the roster right now. It it doesn't matter about how much you're paying Daniel Jones. It doesn't matter about what DeVito has done. If you believe that this team is a quarterback away, that if you just plug a really good quarterback, a franchise-level quarterback into this team, they're going to be able to be not only um, a, a, a team that can make the playoffs, but a team that can compete in the playoffs, then you do it. If you believe that there are multiple pieces that are needed in order to make this team what it needs to be going forward, not just in 2024, but beyond, then you need to to have a strategy that might be a little bit more flexible than just we're going to move heaven and earth and make sure we get a quarterback in the first round. I believe every year, by the way, every year people say, oh, all of these quarterbacks are going to go in the first round. Every year, none of them, like, they never all go in the first round. They never all go in the first round. That's how, that's why we're looking at at, 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 Jalen, at Jalen right now um, being a, a second round draft pick. That's why we're looking at Dak as a third round draft pick because they don't all go in the first round. So I don't think it's it's imperative to necessarily go out and grab a quarterback in the first round, but I do think you need to bring in some quarterback competition. Um, and not just, you know, and not just lip service, because I still I still stand by the fact that Tyrod Taylor outplayed Daniel Jones two years ago. Um, and so if it was a real legitimate quarterback competition, Tyrod Taylor should have been the starting quarterback two years ago, not Daniel Jones. And I really and truly believe that you would have saw a very similar outcome as far as the win loss record between those two guys. That would have maybe opened up. The, the checkbook to be able to do some different things in 2023 when you didn't pay Daniel Jones all of that money to resign him. But we're, we're gone beyond that. Now it's, do I, do I see a guy out there in free agency that I could get at a value, come in and legitimately compete for the starting job? Is there somebody that I could take in the second, third, fourth round as a quarterback who I believe has an ability to push whomever's in that quarterback room for that starting job the same way that Jalen Hurts pushed um, Carson Wentz in that in that quarterback room and eventually overtook him as a starting quarterback. I think that's where you have to be right now. But if you think that you're a quarterback away, move the pieces, make it happen, wheel and deal, go get your quarterback right now. Going to be interesting to see what Joe Sheen does. He has admitted that quarterback is on the list. They're going to have to bring somebody in again because of who they have under contract and those that they have under contract, their health statuses. So whether it's a veteran, whether it's, you know, going to be a rookie, they, you know, Dable has already said that when Daniel Jones is healthy, he will be the starter. I'm not so sure I would have made that announcement. I, I could see why he did maybe to give Daniel Jones a reason to, to really attack his rehab and not have to worry about anything else. But I got to think, Gene, that you got to have a competition next year. I mean, am I crazy for thinking that? Not at all. I actually think there should be, a, unless you have one of them ones, you should have a competition every year. Every position should be up for up for, up for for um, grabs. And, and that's how you keep the iron sharp. You allow them to go out there and prove it and earn it every single year. I think way too many times we get caught up in this, well, I really earned this. It's like, okay, yeah, you earned it then, but now what are you doing to earn it? Are you still continuing to work towards earning it? And so I believe that there should be a competition regardless. I actually think Daniel Jones will be fine. I don't I don't think there'll be any setbacks. I think he'll come back. He'll probably be ready to go sometime midsummer. Um, I don't think he'll miss any of the of, of camp or or preseason if they choose to play him in the preseason, which I absolutely believe they need to do. Um because we've just seen how ACL tears come now. Like 
like these guys are just way too they were way too mon maniacal with their recovery right they 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 have all of the medicine and all of the proper things in the world to get it right so i don't think that'll be an issue we watched um we watched joe burrow come back from an from a knee injury that was further into the season than 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 dj was when he was hurt and he came back and he was ready to go the next year so i i don't think we'll see a lot of a lot of things but it will be interesting to see how he responds knowing that this is probably it for him like he's going to have to fight against someone he's going to have to prove it he's going to have to be able to show his worth or it may be you know um curtains for him as a starting quarterback for the giants all right now coming up we're going to talk about needs and also things that the giants coaching staff brian dable in particular can do better because there were a lot of things I thought this year that were head scratchers. So we'll talk about that right after this with coach Gene Clemens. Don't go anywhere. Hey, giant fans, just because the giant season is coming to an end soon, doesn't mean that the fun of playing daily fantasy sports with prize picks has to stop because now with basketball season underway, prize picks gives you the chance to pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League that was created specifically for combo projections featuring two or more players from different sports or leagues. And did you know that you can also play along with friends and family by checking out the community tab? Prize Picks is so easy to play. Just pick two or more players, predict their stats, and then sit back and see how they perform. It takes less than 60 seconds to make an entry. And when you play with Prize Picks, you'll enjoy quick and easy withdrawals, easy gameplay, and a wide selection of players and stat types. So what are you waiting for? Go to pricepicks.com slash NFL and use the promo code Lockdown NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's pricepicks.com slash Lockdown NFL. And that promo code is Lockdown NFL for your first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, everybody, welcome back to Locked On Giants. I'm your host, Patricia Trena, and my special guest is Coach Gene Clemens of Giants Country. Check out his work over there. He's got a bunch of stuff that we have posted. We posted it on Tuesday, and we continue to post his stuff, as well as all of the talented writers we have over at Giants Country, including yours truly, although I'm the least talented of the group there. I just I just sit back and... and uh, make suggestions to the talent and they come and they work their magic. So make sure you check them out. No, I'm just kidding. I try to, I try my best to be talented, but anyway, coach Dean, let's talk about this giants team moving forward. You know, a lot of people have opinions on needs, but I want to start with the coaching staff, you know, this year, Brian Dable to me, um, I thought there were some things that he did that left me wondering what he was thinking. What was his thought process? You can go back to the um, the summer, how he didn't really play the the uh, starters um, in in the preseason, really, to let them gel despite all the new pieces. You can go back to the offensive line handling, you know, rotating guys in and not having that unit set. You know, when you look at the job Dable has done. What do you think are the biggest areas he needs to take the next step forward in to to recapture some of that success he had in his first year? Well, I think that one of the things that that everyone was excited about when when Dable took over was more offensive innovation, right? Um, have you seen anything that was innovating this year out of this offense? Um, I didn't see anything. the The crazy part about it, PT, is in the in the in the in training camp we saw all of this really awesome stuff like all of this really like interesting personnel groupings and 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 packages and and plays that they had that they were running and we saw none of it in real actual games now i don't know if the whole point was to show that so that the outside world thought that that's what they were doing and then they would come back and do this i don't know if Part of it was, hey, we don't have the offensive linemen in place to do it. They were without Evan. They were they were without Andrew um, Thomas for a long for a lot of for a lot of games. They they at one point in time were starting five backups. Some of them were right off the street, um, you know, out there when Tyrod was 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 court, quarterbacking. I, I don't know if those are the reasons, but I feel like 
those are even more reasons to be innovative. And I didn't see a lot of innovation outside of putting Tyrod at quarterback and running some quarterback gun run stuff with them. So I think that was a big miss um, from this offensive coaching staff um, this year. Um, I also just don't like the fact that Tyrod Taylor and um, and 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 um, Darren Waller were not targeted more um, to just get the ball in their hands. I didn't. I don't think I I could recall a quick screen to Darren Waller. I don't think I don't I didn't see a lot of just quick swing passes to you know to to Saquon Barkley. He is on track right now, and he'll, he you know unless he unless he does something over the last couple of games to have his um the least receptions that he's had in a season as a full time starter. Like when, when we take away him missing tons of games, uh, like how do you go from being a guy that was getting ninety receptions? as a as a rookie to a guy that can barely top 40 like that doesn't make any sense to me you know like a lot of the stuff that they were using and they were doing with Wondell on um, Robinson I was like you should do some of that stuff with Saquon Barkley because I love Wondell but Wondell is still 150 pounds soaking wet with a snowsuit on like he's still him but but Saquon Barkley is that dynamic guy and so like I, I just was, I was disappointed in, in how he was using the pass game. I thought it would be better because of what we saw in 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 training camp. We just saw all of these things where where Waller and Barkley were out in 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 in, in routes and, and getting targeted on on a on a, a regular basis, and I just didn't see that at much defensively. I I have to tell you that the most frustrating thing that I've seen this year is the constant dropping of Kayvon Thibodeau into coverage. Mm. I do not understand for the life of me why Wink Martindale came to New York and decided he was no longer going to be the I just heat people up a- as often as possible Wink Martindale. I understand that maybe he felt like the back end wasn't what it was in Baltimore, and so there was n- there wasn't a need to there was a there was almost a protection he was trying to provide but watching them get zero pass rush while Kayvon Thibodeau is lost in coverage like just guarding a patch of grass made absolutely no sense to me and I love Wink you know how much I'm a fan of of, of Wink Martindale and what he does and what he's been and the type of person that he is and and what he brings to the table as a defensive coordinator I think it's asinine that, that there could be a, a, a Giants without Wink Martindale as the defensive coordinator next year. But that's a miss. Like, if you look at – if I went through and started counting up all of the times that Kayvon Thibodeau, who was playing – who's playing darn near every single snap in a game, is dropping into coverage in passing downs where he should be rushing the quarterback because Aziz hasn't been healthy all year and they have nobody else – who gives you a legitimate pass rush from the edge on that team. It, it, it's it's maddening to me how you can't allow this man to just pin his ears back and go hunt on obvious passing downs. Yeah, that's a big mystery to me as well. And, you know, some people, you know, speaking of, of Kayvon, they make the comment that he shows up against the weaker teams, but against the better teams, he disappears. Do you agree with that? Do you see that, or is that just overblown? I think that's I think that's a bunch of BS. Like I, I don't I don't I don't agree with that at all. And 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 with that being said, who doesn't show up against the bad teams? Like all of the greats eat off of the bad teams and may have a quiet game versus the good teams. But it's just Kayvon Thibodeau out there. Like that's what people are not really. Like when it comes to pass rushing, I love, I, like we can we can love Dexter Lawrence all we want. Dexter Lawrence is not a he is not a he is not Aaron Donald when it comes to pass rushing. Pass rushing, he is not your like expecting him to get double digit sacks every year is foolhardy. Like that's not where his game is going to be because he has to be the guy that takes on double teams every single play. He has to be your 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 quintessential run stopper as well. That just doesn't equate into double digit sacks. Who else is there? 
if, if, if when Aziz is out there, he hasn't looked as twitchy as he's looked in the years past. He's probably a little bit um heavy because he's been on the in, he's been injured, so he's not working out most likely the same way that he would. So he doesn't have that same level of explosion. There could be a a a, a factor of he may never have that level of explosion again. It may just be these injuries have taken it out of him. Who else is out there? Who else is out there that's going to get pressure? They have a guy on the they have a guy on the team who could be a really good edge rusher, but they're playing him at linebacker. Isaiah Simmons is out there playing linebacker in and on a part-time basis when he could be a full-time edge rusher in in obvious passing downs. And so like when people say that Kayvon only shows up versus the bad teams, I, I, I counter with, well, the good teams do what? They game plan to make sure that Kayvon Thibodeau is not going to be the one that beats them. And so now it's, it's, it's on someone else to make a play, and they don't always make a play. And then sometimes they do because yesterday you saw a couple people make sacks who we haven't really heard from all year, Jahad Ward being one of them, who was able to get to the quarterback specifically because you have to pay attention to Kayvon Thibodeau coming off edge. And so like when people say, oh, well, he it's, it's almost like they keep trying to find reasons to discredit his growth. Like he's not a second year player. Has anybody looked at what Aiden Hutchinson has done this year? Has anybody paid attention? Cause Aiden Hutchinson had a fantastic rookie year. Has he had that good of a second year? How about how about Walker down in down in Jacksonville? Has he even come close to to feasting on the bad teams the way that Kayvon Thibodeau has? The answer is no. You know why? Because this thing is hard, and these tackles are good, and these offenses are smart. And so when Kayvon Thibodeau is able to get, you know, um, have have great games versus the quote unquote bad talent, I'd love to know who the bad teams are because if we're bad. Right. If if the Giants are supposedly bad, then who cares if he's like he's just he's just getting off on teams who are just as good as his team is. So I think it's a lot of I I, I really do. I, I'm not a big fan of that. I think it's I think it's a lot much to do about nothing. You you should be happy that you got KT. And, and I feel the same way about Xavier McKinney while we're over here banging the table for people as well. They should be happy we have Xavier McKinney. Because the Giants don't have those two young prospects um, playing for them, that's two big holes that they need to um, fill. All right, Gene. So on that note, your final, my final question to you is: the Giants do have a lot of needs. They will not be able to fill all those needs. No team can fill all of its needs in an off season. So if you are prioritizing what the Giants need to accomplish, I mean, no questions asked. They have got to do this. This coming off season, what are your priorities for this team? If I had to pinpoint the absolute, you've got to make sure that you take care of it on um, this off season. You have to get better on the interior offensive line, and you must get better pass rush help from the edge. Um, however, you do it, I don't really particularly care. But those are two places that you absolutely have to improve. Um, a lot of people will point to um, right tackle because the Evan Neal situation, but you just can't be out here giving up on second year um, right tackles that you pick with a you know with a top ten pick. That just doesn't make any sense, especially when he's twenty two years old. Um, and it's and it's had some injuries, but you have to start to put things in place to secure everything else. So if he's not the answer, if that's still the issue, that's the only issue. But right now, right tackle is not the only issue. I would argue left guard is a big issue. Right guard is kind of an issue. Center is going to have to play way better than he played this year so far. Um, probably needs to get a lot stronger um, because he's not going to get any bigger. And then you need more consistent play out of the right tackle. And so I think that's a place that you – interior offensive line is a place that you can get. You don't have to necessarily um, spend big in the draft to get it. You don't have to necessarily spend big in free agency to get it. Um, so you can you can shore up that. And then there's edge rushers out there that are going to cost you money. You can't be out here being cheap. You could have had Jadavion Clowney for not that much money 
and the Giants were out here being cheap and instead went out and got Boogie Basham. What has he done all year? No offense, Boogie, but you haven't done anything. So um, when you get an opportunity to get guys who could be legitimately effective in your scheme, you've got to go and do it. There's no reason why the the Ravens have to be the team still out here just gobbling or in, in San Francisco just out here gobbling up edge rush talent. The the 49ers have seven edge rushers over there who at one point in time were considered to be an elite level edge rusher. That is an embarrassment of riches over there for one team to have. Randy Gregory couldn't help on the New York Giants. I I'd like to beg to differ. You know, and so like I think that those are two places you absolutely have to get better at because if you get better in the offensive line, maybe you have better success out of your quarterback. Maybe that you have better success out of your quarterback. Again, if your thought process is we're a quarterback away, move heaven and earth, that becomes number one priority. But if you're not a quarterback away, you got to get better on the offensive line. You got to get better with an edge rusher. Those are two places I think you absolutely have to address. Sounds good to me. I've been screaming about edge rusher now for what two years? Two, three Maybe years. We've been over here talking about we need depth. We need more than one. We need more than one. We need more than mm-hmm. two. You need about four of them. And all of the elite teams are showing you that that is the way. You it's not, I have one elite edge rusher. All of the best teams, they all have multiple guys who come out there and rush the quarterback, not just one and not just two. The Giants have one consistent one right now. And all they need to do is go back and look at their history, 2007, 2011, when they had at right least there. three. It's right there. And now they open, and now you open up all of the, the cool things that you like to do when you personnel people in. They, they did a personnel group in, uh, um, in, in the Eagles game where they had um, Dexter Lawrence lined up back. I think on the broadcast they were calling it something like the sexy dice I was like, throw those dice away. Whatever that was, throw it away. It wasn't good. They had they had a couple people in front of Dexter and on the and on the um snap of the ball, they all just attacked and then they attacked and hit different gaps. But to an offensive lineman, it, they don't matter if you just sprawl out and hit different gaps. They it matters when you twist and you stunt. But you have to have dynamic people doing that. Like nobody's gonna be like afraid of 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 um a Sean Robinson doing, you know, doing stunts and stuff like that. So I just, I just think we've got to, the, the giants really have to focus on getting more depth with le- legitimate explosive edge rushers. Yeah. Amen to that. No argument for me on that. And offensive line also a big one. I mean, there's other s- spots, obviously they could fill in, but those two would be a top priority. If I'm Joe Shane heading into this off season and, you know, hopefully as he continues to grow into the job, he, you know, sees that and adjusts maybe some of the philosophies. Because like you said, Boogie Basham, they traded for the, him, and he's been inactive the last several weeks. So how did that work out? So can't be having that for sure. Well, and, and, and and also, like, we, we, can't, we can't let go by the fact that you had two top ten picks. And in, if you remember, I wrote articles about the fact that one of those picks should have been traded, traded down, collect more picks, still be able to um, garner uh, somebody who could be a legitimate, a legitimate offensive lineman for them. I, I had a scenario where we where they traded down and then took Tyler Lindenbaum later in the um, later in the first round. That would have probably netted them another first round pick, or at worst. A, a, a few other second round picks they could have attacked the right tackle in the draft last year as opposed to two years ago um or excuse me um this this past year instead of two years ago but they would have been set at center um with Lindenbaum, who i believe is one of the best young centers in the game and 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 so it's like when you have the opportunity to flip these draft picks into multiple picks, you have to do it because that is the number one way to build is to build through the draft. It's the most cost efficient way to build, especially when you have to pay a quarterback. You've got to be able to su- to supplement your team with cheaper, high level talent. And that's guys on rookie contracts. Amen. 
Amen to that. Coach Jean, always great chopping up ball with you. I mean, you know, we don't do it enough. We're going to have to do it a little bit more often in the off season because there's going to be a lot of stuff to talk about, my gotta, friend. Got to have me on. We got to we got to make it happen. We, we, we'll make we will make it happen because you know next month obviously you got the Senior Bowl, you got the College All Star Games. I'm sure you as well as Emory Hunt they have have begun diving into the college prospects. So we'll be calling on you for your expertise on that because you guys always do your homework. I know people don't always agree with you guys, but you do your homework and. I respect that, which is why I have you guys on. So we will make it happen, my friend. And meanwhile, folks, make sure you check out Coach Gene's work over on Giants Country. He's got a bunch of articles up right now. They were posted on Tuesday. He's done some work on Evan Neal, whether he's a guard or a tackle, and can they salvage him as a tackle? So that piece is up as well. So check all that out. Make sure you also keep it here on the Locked on Giants podcast tomorrow. We have Crossover Thursday with Locked On Rams, and then we'll just keep on rolling until we get you to the end of the week. It's fast. It's a short work week, but we'll get you there to the end of the week and through the end of the season. For Coach Dean Clemens, I'm Patricia Trainer. Thank you, as always, for tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow, Giant fans.